Hello there! Don't you think crystals are pretty cool? I certainly do. I mean, look at these colors and shapes. Ever since I was little, I wanted some kind of crystal jewelry. Maybe a single green crystal that I could wear around my neck. I thought that would be brilliant. Why green? I like green. You know what I also like? LEDs. And 3D printing. Crystals, LEDs, 3D printing. I think I can make something with that. Last month I made a video about resin 3D printers, how they work and how to use them. And one really cool thing about resin printers is that you can make transparent prints with them. And not just a little translucent, I mean really clear transparent. People have even printed lenses with this. So I bought some transparent green resin, which by the way came with a crack in the bottle cap. So my first order of business was to clean everything, which also somehow managed to clean the print on the label. Anyway, it prints great and the prints look really cool, especially when they come directly out of the printer. So I can just design a simple crystal 3D model, print it on the 3D printer, stuff some LEDs inside and I will have a really cool pendant to wear around my neck. However, it turns out it isn't quite that simple. There's one issue that's preventing me from getting the look that I want. So these parts did look really nice and I could see right through them when they were fresh out of the 3D printer and still wet with resin. However, now that they are washed with isopropyl alcohol and fully cured with ultraviolet light, the resin really isn't that clear anymore. I have also tried some colorless transparent resin and that actually becomes pretty yellow when it gets exposed to a certain amount of UV light. I'm guessing the same thing happens to the green resin, but the green color probably hides a lot of it. Hmm. I think I need to do a little bit of research in order to preserve that nice fresh out of the printer look. Okay, so apparently the not so perfectly transparent properties come from the imperfections on the surface of the print. Because the printer prints in layers, there are layer lines, which for my chosen resolution are barely visible with the naked eye, but they still scatter light. And then there are probably small scratches and other small distortions that add to that. When the print is still dripping wet with resin, all these imperfections are smoothed out so that's why the model looks really clear when it's freshly printed. So how do we get the prints to still look fresh even after washing and curing? Well, let me create a test model that we can use to run a few experiments. The test model is really simple. It's just a five-sided polygon that's extruded 30 millimeters and has an added tip. I printed a bunch of these to be able to try different methods of treating them. On the test models, I noticed some vertical lines that look almost like layer lines. But layer lines would normally be horizontal and not vertical. Only one side of the polygon looks a bit different. I'm pretty sure these lines come from the pixels of the LCD screen in the printer. Because the screen uses pixels, it isn't possible to print perfectly straight edges except if the edges are aligned with the pixels. So how do we make these 3D printed crystals transparent? One way would be to very meticulously polish the surface of the print 
which means sanding it with increasingly finer and finer sandpaper and eventually polishing it with soft cloth and polishing compound. I really hate sanding, it takes so much time. Instead of polishing out and thereby removing the little bumps and wrinkles on the surface, we could also try to fill them up. We can coat the part with something more or less liquid that flows into the tiny gaps and then hardens, giving us a perfectly smooth surface. And hopefully the refraction of the coat will be similar enough to the 3D printing resin so that the part will become completely clear. That sounds way less tedious than polishing it for hours. Let's try that first. I am using two-part epoxy with low viscosity to coat the parts. Well, the epoxy makes it kind of clear but the surface isn't really that even as I would hope it would be. But now that I think about it, I think I've been pretty stupid. I guess that's not news. Instead of using a two-part epoxy resin, I could have just been using the actual 3D printing resin. That's pretty runny, so it should give us a nice smooth surface and it cures in minutes in UV light instead of having to wait 24 hours for the epoxy to harden. So I'm going to try that now. The resin coated part do look pretty clear now, especially compared to the uncoated test pieces. So the one that I'm holding is the one that I coated with a brush. The other one is the one that I just simply threw into the resin. And unfortunately that one tipped over and got a little bit of its coat removed, but the other sides look fine. And the surface isn't perfect, but considering that this is very little effort, I think that's a pretty good method of making the resin look clear and shiny. There is one more method to try, and that's using a clear spray coat. Probably the best results will be on a smoothly sanded surface, so I will try the spray coat on one sanded part and one not sanded part for comparison. Here they are, the results. The completely untreated part actually looks pretty cool with a backlight. This piece was coated with two-part epoxy. It is clear, but the surface is very bumpy. The part that was submerged in 3D printing resin and the one that had 3D printing resin brushed on look pretty similar. Both are very clear, but the surface could be smoother. The spray coated part is only a little bit clearer than the one that wasn't post-processed at all. And finally, the polished and spray coated part isn't as clear as I would have expected, but it definitely has the most high quality looking surface. The piece that took the most work has the best looking results. I am shocked by this complete disregard for my laziness. But now for the important question. Did you get a new haircut? Well, thanks for noticing, but the question I had in mind was, how do the crystals look with LEDs inside? I slightly adapted the crystal design and added some holes for LEDs. 
I'm going to test if it looks better to put the LED deep into the crystal or if it should sit right at the edge. I am using a coin cell to directly power the LED. And now I will shut up for a minute and let you enjoy the glowing crystals. Well, I am pretty happy with how this project turned out. I think the crystals look really cool. Unfortunately, it's a little bit hard to capture them on camera. It's better to see them live and in person. That's why you actually have the chance to get one for yourself. I will be making a couple of the crystals for my patrons. If you are already a patron of mine, regardless of the tier, I will send you a message soon. If you are not a patron of this channel, you can get a crystal by becoming a patron. In case you don't know Patreon, you can go to patreon.com slash matumakes to support this channel with a monthly payment. I am adding a new tier that includes getting one of these crystals as soon as your first payment gets through. And after that, you can freely decide whether you would like to stay in that tier, switch to another tier or delete your pledge entirely. You can still keep the crystal. There are only a limited number of spots available to get a crystal, so go check it out. So that's it for this project. Thanks to everyone who is supporting this channel. Thank you all for watching my videos and see you next time on Matumex.